This is Spaluzzi. Welcome to the town of Hingham. Welcome to the Hingham Shipyard. It's, it's an area that you obviously know well. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. This is a great turnout uh, and the weather has cooperated beautifully and I really, really appreciate the, the interest uh, in, in this event. Um, I'm going to get right to it. My name is Paul Healy. This is my first time serving as a moderator, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm going to do my best. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to call the, uh, the event to order. And I would ask that you rise for the presentation of the colors. Bugler, sound the call to the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'd ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, in indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask you now to be seated to the extent you can. A few weeks ago, Andrea Young, who's our historic administrator, asked me if I would uh, serve as a moderator for this event. And I, I immediately said yes. I moved a couple of activities I had for today. Um, but this is a labor of love, because in an earlier time in my life here, um, I worked with Samuels and Associates to redevelop this shipyard. And to have someone who worked at this shipyard celebrate the 100th birthday here was a, a pleasure I certainly would not want to miss under any circumstances. So I put together a few words. I hope you like them. And to, <laughs> to, to give you some context. Today, this place is a great seaside development, enjoyed by residents and visitors alike. But 80 years ago, this place supplied crucial ships to defeat the forces of darkness. The woman we honor today made history, Margaret Spaluzzi, a centenarian, on this very day, worked in this yard as a welder. As you drove in, I hope you saw the Eagle Tower on the tower facing Lincoln Street. That eagle once hung high on the wall of the giant steel mill here. Its inscription exhorted those that work here and says, quote, and if our line should form and break because of the things you failed to make, that extra tank or ship or plane for which we waited all in vain, and the supplies that never came, will you then come and take the blame for we not you shall bear the cost of battles you, not we, have lost. The work that took place here was critical to the success of the war effort. In 1941, America was under attack. The Axis powers were at their height. The fate of the free world hung in the balance. We were slowly emerging from the Great Depression, and now we were at war. So America rolled up its sleeves and went to work, and a determined civilian production effort ensured victory. While the story is familiar to some, it's worth repeating. We had a critical need for ships. This field, with its deep harbor, was an ideal spot to build and launch ships so desperately needed for the war effort. The yard went up in a dizzying six months. Leslie, where are you? 
And soon a workforce of 24,000 people were working around the clock seven days a week. Margaret Spaluzzi was one of those workers. She wanted to do her part to help her country. And so 80 years ago, she stepped forward and got trained in Quincy to become a welder. It was hard work and dangerous. She often worked in conditions that were very cold. The heavy suede jacket she wore was designed to protect her from the burns of the welder's torch. It was not for the faint of heart. A welder's torch can reach 3,200 degrees and the gases generated can easily sicken even the strongest of us. But Margaret worked day in, day out here, and stayed right to the end to do her duty. It was here that the men and women, working as a determined team, built a record 227 ships in just three and a half years. In 1943, the Navy tasked Hingham Bethlehem Steel with a production goal of 60 destroyer escorts. Hingham built 90. Margaret was part of that special team that earned this shipyard the coveted E for Excellence Flag Award. Secretary of the Navy James Forrestal himself presented it to the entire yard. No doubt Margaret was there as a part of that proud moment. The DEs, as they became known, went on to protect convoys in the North Atlantic where a desperate war was waged in the cold, unforgiving, hostile waters. 2,600 ships were sunk there, 13 and a half million tons went to the bottom, and over 30,000 lives were lost. The Lady Ian Menzies, who served on a DE built here to guard the convoys, noted that this 210-foot-long, 35-foot-wide ship was as seaworthy as any ship he ever served on. By 1943, the DE's Margaret Spaluzzi was welding together, was stemming the tide in the North Atlantic to defeat the hated U-boats Hitler used to choke out supplies to the Allies. Two of these DE's, the USS Bates and the USS Stainer, did battle. Those street names are here today. And that was not the only kind of ship Margaret built. The landing ship tank, or LSTs, could hold 10 tanks and equipment or a thousand soldiers. They were designed as flat bottom ships to offload men and equipment on shallow hostile, hostile shores. They were used in Europe and the Pacific in places that became etched in sacrifice. Sicily, Anzio, Normandy, Iwo Jima, Leyte, Okinawa to name but a few. Bill Copeland a sailor aboard one of those LSTs built here remembers going through a typhoon towards Okinawa. His LST was lifting up out of the waves and crashing back down on the waves. He remarked, boy, I hope those lady welders did their job well. <laughs> well, they didn't sink. <laughs> in, in closing, I saw a picture of Margaret in her later life standing in front of an inscription of the World War II Memorial in D.C. Yeah. that epitomizes what she did here. It's a quote by Colonel Ovetta Culp Hobby etched into the World War II Memorial in D.C. and it reads, Women who stepped up were measured as citizens of the nation, not as women. This was a people's war and everyone was in it. Thank you sincerely, Margaret. You stepped up when it counted, and we are better for it. Many okay, moving on. Mrs. Spaluzzi, would you be nice enough just to stand? Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Margaret Spaluzzi. Yes. <laughs> At this time, I would like to introduce some of the honored guests that have joined us today. I see Patrick O'Connor, O'Connor, Senator O'Connor. 
here in the audience. And I'd ask the Senator to come forward, say a few words, should he be inclined to do so. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's really an honor. Margaret, you can sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it, it's it's an honor for uh, for me to be here today. I uh, I have the great distinction of being able to be the state senator uh, for the Plymouth Norfolk district, which Margaret is right outside of where you live. But with us here today is Kathy Lenatra, your state representative. Yeah, but it's an honor for me too. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Um, you know. We often have events on our daily calendar that we look at the day before and go, oh, you know, I have to go to this meeting or I have to do this Zoom or we have to go and take those he votes. He does that. I don't do oh, that. Yeah, I well. love everything I do. It's <laughs> a good one. So, uh, so when I looked at today's, uh, you know, earlier this week when I looked at the calendar for today and I saw this event, uh, it really warmed my heart to be able to be here to say thank you to you, to say happy birthday to you. Uh, and to really let you know how much we all cherish you and the work that you did here. And uh, you are truly one of those individuals who were the hands that built America. It's not just the infrastructure that we built that re remains here. It's the infrastructure that we built that we sent to really save the world. And so um, for that, I just want to say a, a deep, heartfelt thank you. Happy birthday. And one of the things that we have uh, the very um, the, the, the very great honor of being able to do is to submit uh, names of individuals to the House and to the Senate clerks and uh, if those individuals rise to the standard set by the legislature they read those names into the record and we had your name read into the record uh, of your birthday and, we, and, and, and in recognition of that they present you one of these citations and so it says to you Margaret in recognition of the happy occasion of your hundredth birthday and for your outstanding dedication and service at the Hingham shipyard during World War II and it's signed by myself, State Senator Patrick O'Connor, State Senator Sue Moran, uh, who couldn't be here today, but wanted to send her uh, best wishes as well, as well as the Senate President, Karen Spilka. Um, and it's offered on the 2nd of November, 2021. So you're forever part of the Senate Journal, and, uh, and we're honored to be with you today. Thank you. so wonderful to be here and see all of you and I want to say hello to all Margaret's friends in the back from the Kingston Council on Aging. I have had the pleasure of knowing Margaret for oh, well over a decade now. Um, we've been dance partners, we've been Mr. and Mrs. Claus, we've done many, many things together and um, the energy that we all know that Margaret has it just uplifts us all and I'm so happy to be your friend and I'm so happy to be part of this. We had to celebrate Margaret's 100th birthday, was it a few weeks ago, right? Yeah. And it had to be a surprise because she doesn't really like anything like this. <laughs> so we had to keep it a secret. Um, so I'm happy that we did that, but I'm so happy to be here to celebrate you. Thank and you know I love you. Thank you. You're welcome. At this time, I'd like to invite um, State Representative uh, Joe Machino to uh, join us at the podium, along with uh, Senator James Murphy, who also represents the town of Hingham. Uh, <laughs> we asked her to come up again. Uh, oh, look at this. There we go. Well, Margaret, as the State Representative for Hingham, we just wanted to come myself and Representative Murphy to wish you a happy birthday and to not be outdone by the Senate. We also have a citation for you. Not that this is at all competitive, right? We work collaboratively right? by Kimberly. Uh, but I did just want to say, uh, Rat Lanatra has told me so much about you. And after reading your bio, I just wanted to, to sort of echo everyone's congratulations. And it just seems to me that the women of your generation really were cut from a different cloth. And I, you don't usually say this about women, but they have true grit. And in that moment, when they asked, you stepped forward, and you were fearless, and you were fabulous. And I know from your friend and from Lenatra that you don't like these kinds of celebrations. But I think it's important that we did, because you are the, 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 the ideal, the embodiment that we should all step forward in our own service 
um, to try to emulate your wonderful life. And so in honor of a life well lived um, and your 100th birthday, which I can't even <laughs> fathom. I'm only 56, I can't even imagine. Um, <laughs> will I make it? Will I make it? I'm going to live up to your example, and I'm going to make it too. Um, but in honor of your 100 years of life well lived and your contributions to the community and to country, we've also offered this citation to you signed by the Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano, myself, and Representative Murphy. Rep, do you want to add a few words? I, I just want to know, how are you 100 years old? When they called your name, you, you, you actually moved faster than I moved. You jumped right up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you shot right out of that chair like you were 18 years old. <laughs> Whatever your secret is, keep doing it. Maybe fill me in afterwards, because I, I could use some of that knowledge. Uh, Can I say something? Sure, it's your day. This is four generations. Me, wow. my daughter, my granddaughter. And wow. your beautiful grand, great grand. beautiful family. Thank you to your family. You know, it's because of you and, and all of your efforts years ago that we're all here. I mean, I can look at these pictures and have my own memories of the shipyard, but they're nothing like your memories, I'm sure. <laughs> but your efforts really led to us all being here today in this beautiful yard celebrating you. And um, I want to thank you for all your efforts. I can only imagine being 20 years old and learning how to weld and being in ships, hulls, and all the things you must have seen back then. <laughs> Truly extraordinary. So today is, is your day, and um, we're all down here because of you. As Patrick said, we wouldn't miss today. We're tired of Zoom meetings, and well, this isn't a Zoom <laughs> celebration. It's nice to see real people in person. Uh, but on behalf of myself and Joan and the House of Representatives, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything you've done for our community. So today is your day. Congratulations and happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie and Joan. That was, that was well done. We're fortunate to have uh, two of the three selectmen here today, or select persons, I guess we call them now. Um, and the, the third is serving his country at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, uh, and would be here, um, but duty calls. So at this point in time, I would invite uh, the chair of the select board, Joseph Fisher, and um, select board member Liz Klein to join us at the podium. This is going to turn out to be a battle of certificates because, of course, <laughs> the Hingham Select Board, which is very prominent compared to the House and Senate of, of the legislators, we, we have our own certificate for you. But before, before presenting that, I wanted to say a few words about your late husband, Tony Spelusi. I understand that his sister was your best friend. And that is, in fact, how you met him. Um, he served in the U.S. Navy yes, he did. aboard the USS Currituck, yep. and he, he was a member of the Abington VFW. Um, I understand that his ship was en route to Japan when the war ended, and he was able to come back to Boston, uh, where, you, where you met him. And I understood from, because I, I watched one of your interviews, that um, he actually had a little less hair than I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and af after 67 years of marriage, Tony passed away in 2011 at the age of 93. Yep. So during the time that he was serving the Navy, you became a welder. And I understand that you dared 10 friends yeah. to become welders to help support the war effort. You were trained in Quincy. And then six of those women, yes. and you're one of them, became welders here at the Hingham Shipyard. Yep. Uh, it's just an amazing effort. And I have a select board member, Liz Klein, here, who would like to read the certificate that the Board of Selectmen, it was a close vote, uh, but we, <laughs> we, 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 it somehow came out unanimous. Uh, so uh, please, Liz. happy to present this certificate of congratulations presented to Margaret Spaluzzi in recognition of a very special occasion, your 100th birthday. 
The Select Board, on behalf of the Town of Hingham, hereby takes this opportunity to wish you, Margaret Sibaluzzi, a very happy and healthy 100th birthday. As a welder at the Hingham Shipyard during World War II, you have donned steel toed boots and flannel pajamas under your work clothes while working tirelessly and proudly contributing to the war effort. We applaud and thank you for your dedication and service to our country. Godspeed and happy birthday, Mrs. Felucci. Thank you very much. I'd invite all of you to uh, come and look at the pictures of, of the yard. Um, and it's, it's the perfect segue for this, this next person. Um, I've been working with her for about 25 years uh, on the shipyard. And as I said, it's a labor of love. Um, but it, it has been an, an excellent public-private partnership to preserve the history of the yard. And you can see it throughout, you know, should you choose to walk about, the placards and the, the posters and the pictures, they, they tell the story of what went on here in a very special time. Uh, our community is known principally for its colonial homes, but the, the, the unmatched war effort, I think we were second only to Long Beach during the Second World War, is, is a point of pride for this town uh, and to have uh, Ms. Beluzzi here in person uh, attesting to that is, is a particular, uh, it's a great thing. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to someone who most of you may not know, but she's been an important part of preserving the history and uh, tastefully telling the story, Ms. Leslie Cohen. <clears throat> Thank you, Paul. Um, thank you, everybody, for being here today and for the town of Hingham um, for helping to mark such a wonderful milestone for Margaret, for you and your family. Um, congratulations and happy birthday. It's clear that your hundred wonderful years have been built in a life full of love and community. I'm Leslie Cohen. I'm a partner at Samuels & Associates and Chief Operating Officer, and we're the owner and developer of this iteration of the shipyard. The shipyard holds such an important place in history, not only for the town of Hingham, um, but also for Massachusetts and the entire country. And how rare it is for us as developers to inherit such a rich history on, the prop on this property. Um, as Paul mentioned, we were especially committed to preserving and celebrating the history um, by working hand in hand with Paul and many members of the town, developing um, a visual storytelling that can last throughout time. Margaret, you and your riveting sisters were some of the early inspirations for us generation of working women, and we thank you. And in recognition of all of your achievements, I'm delighted to give you something that's not a certificate, but a, a framed photo um, of one of the destroyer escorts built here at the launch at, in, during World War II. So thank you very much for allowing us to be part of this, and happy birthday. Thank you. A few other folks I think are important to remember and recognize. Uh, the town administrator has taken some time out of his very busy schedule to attend. Thomas Mayo, appreciate you coming, Tom. Uh, the color guard always does a fantastic job. Thank you, gentlemen and lady. The Hingham um, Historical Society put together this, uh, these pictures for us to enjoy. Uh, as, as well as something else we're about to embark on. Uh, so without further ado, I'll continue along. It's, at this point in time, I'm going to ask the uh, veterans that are present here. Um, gentlemen, would you present Ms. Peluzzi with the... This bouquet of flowers is being presented to Margaret Spaluzzi uh, by the uh, veterans here in the community. And following this presentation, uh, one of our 
uh, fine officers is going to uh, take this bouquet where it will be brought to sea uh, in memory of those that perished and were lost at sea. Officer? Where are you? Bugla, sound taps for those lost at sea. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you all so much for coming. It has been a pleasure to have Mrs. Spaluzzi in our presence today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Retire the colors.